Okay, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through six lower body exercises that'll target the quads, hamstrings, glutes, and calves, plus one exercise for the abs at the end. As always, we're kicking things off with a five to 10 minute warm up on the treadmill or Stairmaster, followed by some quick lower body specific dynamic stretching to get the knees and hips mobile and ready to lift. From there, we're jumping into our first exercise of the day, which is a deadlift for just one heavy top set of five reps. And of course, before hitting that top set, we'll do our typical warm up pyramid, gradually building up in weight first. Now, if you don't like to deadlift, you can feel free to replace it with a trap bar deadlift, which will keep the back more upright and emphasize the quads a bit more. Or you can do a barbell hip thrust as a more glute dominant substitution, or you can do Bulgarian split squats as a more quad dominant substitution, still emphasizing that forward lean a little more than usual so that some of that emphasis will be shifted to the glutes and hamstrings. All right, so the deadlift top set should be taken to an RPE of eight or nine, meaning you're leaving no more than one or two reps in the tank. And since the volume is lower here, it's important that we compensate by pushing the set closer to failure. Still, since we don't want this strength work to interfere with the remaining leg volume to follow in this workout, we don't want the set to be cripplingly difficult either. If you're more interested in increasing your deadlift strength over the coming weeks, you can drop one rep each week as you simultaneously add weight. This is called linear periodization, which is when the rep volume decreases as the weight on the bar increases. So you do five reps in week one, four reps in week two, three reps in week three, two reps in week four, one rep max in week five, adding weight each week, and then take a deload in week six by hitting four reps at a lighter load. If you don't care about strength at all and you're only concerned with hypertrophy, I'd say to just stick with five reps the whole way through and aim to either increase the weight or improve some aspect of your technique from week to week. All right, after that heavy top set, we're gonna strip the weight back and do two sets of eight reps on the stiff-legged deadlift. For these, I'll usually drop from something in the range of 405 pounds on my top set down to 225 pounds for the stiff leg pulls. So something around 50 to 60% of your working weight is probably in the right ballpark for your back off sets. And you wanna think of these as essentially just a normal conventional deadlift, except with higher hips. So instead of dropping your hips down as you bend your knees during the normal deadlift setup, with the stiff leg deadlift, you wanna keep your hips high, keep your knees more straight, and then initiate the pull by just hinging at your hips. These can be a bit awkward if you haven't done them before, so make sure you start light and don't push them too close to failure until you feel fully comfortable with the technique. Okay, next we're moving on to four sets of 10 to 12 reps on the leg press. Now, since the deadlifts will be much more hamstring and glute dominant, we're focusing on smashing the quads here with some high volume leg press. For these, I take a medium stance width on the platform and focus on hitting quality depth at the bottom of each and every rep. You wanna go as deep as you comfortably can without allowing your lower back to round noticeably. I also find that even though locking out the knees at the top isn't actually dangerous, and I can link a great video from Dr. Mike Isertel on that down below, I do find that I can feel my quads a lot better if I maintain a slight knee bend at the top. So I'm using more of a constant tension approach here by not locking the weight out at the top and not pausing in between reps, just getting all the way to 10 to 12 reps with a smooth, consistent cadence. I should also note that you should really try to adhere to a maximum of two minutes of rest in between sets here. That isn't because it's any better or worse for gains, but simply because if you rest too long on these, the workout will most likely start to feel really dragged out and you may start to lose focus by set three or four. So keep the pace of the workout going and don't stall or waste time in between sets. Okay, after that, we're hitting three sets of eight to 10 reps on the glute ham raise. Now I'm using this GHR machine at my gym, which I love because you can use a counterbalance weight to reduce the loading. And this helps me control the movement better than I could with body weight alone. However, if you don't have a machine like this, you can easily set up glute ham raises on the back of a lat pull down machine, and you can use a stick or a broom handle as a counterweight, or you can use a lat pull down bar if that works. Or if you find that awkward, you can have a partner pin down your ankles and do Nordic ham curls, controlling the negative as much as you can, and then using your hands to push you up at the bottom. On these, I try to stay in the so-called active range because there's zero tension on the hamstrings at the top, so I just cut out that top quarter of the movement. This isn't a huge deal, but I just find it helps me keep the focus on my hamstrings better. Okay, next we're moving on to three sets of eight to 10 reps on the slow eccentric leg extension. Now, even though we already hit the quads on the leg press, and that will be enough to trigger growth, remember that the big rectus femoris head of the quads isn't hit very well on leg presses. That's because the rectus femoris is the only head of the quads that crosses both the knee joint and the hip joint. So it never really reaches its full contractile potential with compound movements. This is actually even worse on the squat because the hips get to full extension at the top. So for this reason, I try to include leg extension 
extensions at least once per week, allowing that rectus femoris head to reach peak contraction. We're also using a three second count on the negative of every rep here. This will accomplish two things. First, the eccentric is likely more hypertrophic than the concentric, so ensuring high levels of tension on the eccentric is very important. And secondly, slowing down the negative will force you to use lighter loads, which should put less strain on the knees without compromising the hypertrophic stimulus of the set. All right, after that, we're doing four sets of 15 to 20 reps on the seated calf raise. Even though I'm a bit more on the fence about seated calf raises these days than I was in the past, I still think that if you have access to both a seated machine and a standing machine, it does make sense to include both. So I do one calf exercise with a straight knee and one calf exercise with a bent knee for maximum calf development. The reason I say I'm more on the fence about them these days is because a bunch of studies have come out showing that the soleus muscle, which is the muscle people try to target with seated calf raises, is substantially less responsive to training than the gastroc is. This 2020 study found that the soleus responds quite poorly to both high rep and low rep training. So the idea that you can target the slow twitch dominant soleus with higher reps seems to be outdated in light of this new evidence. So you could argue that whatever volume you're doing trying to target the soleus on the seated calf raise, you'd be better off doing that volume with a straight leg to get the gastroc more involved. This makes sense to me, and if you wanna replace your seated calf work with standing calf work, I think that's fairly reasonable. However, I'd really like to see a long-term hypertrophy study directly comparing soleus growth and gastroc growth on the seated calf raise versus the standing calf raise before jumping to that conclusion. If it turns out that the standing calf raise is in fact better for gastroc growth and soleus growth, then I'd say we might as well throw the seated calf raise out. But until we have that study, I still think including both is probably slightly better for most people. However, if you don't have access to a seated calf raise machine, you probably aren't missing out on much, if anything. And even though high reps or low reps doesn't seem to matter for the calves all that much, I'm still doing higher reps on these just for variety. And since we did relatively lower reps on the first leg day of the week. All right, and to finish off the workout, we're doing three sets of 10 to 20 reps on the Roman chair leg raise. The reason I'm saying 10 to 20 reps is because for some people, 10 reps will be close to failure. For others, they won't be pushing it very hard until they're closer to 20 reps. So the specific rep count doesn't matter here as long as you're pushing yourself close to failure. Once you can no longer get your legs up to your chest level without excessive swinging, you can terminate the set. And as you do these, you wanna think about curling your lower back and squeezing your abs, not just lifting your legs up. Also, if you can't get to at least 10 reps, with straight legs in good form, I'd suggest using a more bent knee first, and then over time you can transition to straight leg raises as you build up more core strength. And then on the other extreme, if 20 reps feels too easy, you should slow down the negative on each rep down to a two to three second count. And then if that's still too easy for you, it may be time to move on to a new YouTube channel, maybe something like Six Pack Shortcuts. And that's a wrap for the six part push pull leg series. As I've been saying throughout the series, if you're looking to put all this information together into a complete training routine, so you have everything you need in one place, I'd recommend checking out my 12 week push pull legs hypertrophy system over on jeffnipper.com. If you'd like to learn more about that program and to see if it's right for you and your goals, I'll leave a link to it in the description box down below. So that's it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.